Hey, I'm Icoso, and I made the very, very stupid mistake of trying to make a full game in only six hours. Let's do this. Everybody, I was so bored and needed some content for my YouTube channel, so the idea of making an entire infinite runner game in just 6 hours came to mind. So here is the idea for the project. You know those small games that there are 3 separate lanes and you have to move your player character to the one with the gap and not get hit by the obstacles? And these just keep coming and coming infinitely and you have to choose the right option. Yeah, I was going to do something like that. But I'm not some basic boyo who's just making basic games, so we're doing this but tripling it. That's right, we're gonna have 9 different lanes and it's going to be such a terrible, terrible game. I can already guarantee that. Icoso's running out of game ideas. So to start off this challenge, I woke up out of bed, which is really helpful when starting any sort of day. Except it wasn't me who chose the time to get up because my fat chonkus of a cat thought, oh yes, it is 4.30am, I must awake my human. And so I woke up at 4.30 in the morning. Here's a picture of my cat by the way, I didn't get mad at him when he wakes me up, in fact I prefer him dragging everything off of my table rather than waking up to a screaming alarm clock. His name is Charlie, but it's actually not, it's Charlesworth. He also goes by Chunky, Bunky, Chunky Bunky, Chubbles, Bonks, Bonky Bears, Fat Boy, Chunkers, Blubbles, Chunkies, and Greg. The list definitely does go on, and here's just another photo of him just for your enjoyment. So, he woke me up early and I fearlessly drank unhealthy amounts of iced coffee to start my day. Eventually, when I got myself to work, it was 6am, meaning I'd finish this challenge at 12pm. I created my Unity project and began with simple player movement. You were the white triangle and I first just set it off by moving towards the right at a set pace. The problem here is that you can't move anywhere else and so you will just crash into the bonker chonkers. So then I added the ability to press number keys 1 to 9 to move between the 9 different lanes. Now as the player you can go into the super secret ninja mode and dodge all of the chunky cats coming your way. But instead of dodging cats, which I realise now would have been a much better idea, I decided to use these orange blocks. At the moment, these were not randomly generated, but that was still to come. Now, you may be thinking, Iko, so this is kind of a weird colour palette you're choosing. Are you colourblind? Why yes, retro game dev, you are correct. But you see, I was looking around my room for inspiration, you know, as you do, and I saw a packet of orange flavoured five gum on my floor. And this is where I got the colours ideas for orange and black. Five gum. Stimulate your senses. Now you can also see that I'm using very simple geometric shapes in the art style. I did this because shapes are really easy to work with, and I cannot draw for the life of me, so it's a win-win. Talking about geometric shapes, come and join my game jam, the GeoJam. It starts in like two weeks or something, I kind of forgot, and it will be lots of fun, link in the description. However, the game was still unfortunately looking pretty boring. There wasn't much to it, although Unity has some really great post-processing features that can help spice it up. You gotta always add a slight vignette to the scene, looking good, and then whacking some bloom onto it. And now it's looking very, very Gamer 100. Hashtag Icoso does not know how to art good, so he uses lots of effects. Now with all of the aesthetics set up, I began work on the actual gameplay. The obstacles would now generate infinitely and at different heights, and the player could move in between them to increase their score. To keep things simple, the counter in the top right just detects whenever the player passes through one of the gaps and adds a point to the score. On the left, there's a list of numbers down the side to help indicate what button the player should be pressing. The player also gets slightly faster now the longer they survive, creating a nice difficulty curve. Here's about the point in development when I thought to myself, Wow, I'm over halfway through my time limit. This is not good. Going back to the graphic sides of things now, I was looking at making some, what we call in the professional indie game dev world, game juice. Game feel if you're boring, but yeah, game juice is better. The first step I took to achieving Juiciness 100 was using Unity's particle system for the player and whenever the player passes through a gap. I also added some background particles, a little bit of camera shake, and made the score increase in size whenever the player got a point. Then I ate some toast. It was awesome. 
Next, I worked a bit on making some very basic menu screens. One when opening the game for the first time, which briefly explains how to play, although the game is simple enough for someone to pick it up and figure it out anyway. I also added a death screen for the player, so that they can see their final score and what their high score is. I also decided on the name Infinite, because I can, and please don't judge me, I was very tired at this point. With all of the gameplay features now in place, I went over into FL Studio and spent about 40 minutes making a background song to loop over. I try to keep it kind of electronic and spacey feeling. I don't really know how it went, but I'm doing a playthrough of the game at the end of the video and you can listen to the music then. Also, it'll be posted over on my second channel, iCoTunes. I also spent around 20 minutes or so creating sound effects in BFXR and implementing them into the project. And then it was finally done. 12pm stood away from my laptop and reflected against my poor life decisions. You can go play the game for yourself with the link in the description, and who knows, maybe y'all will start a high score competition or something. I'll do a quick run through of the game now to showcase it, and I'll end the video after that. Thank you so much for watching and massive appreciation towards my top patrons, DerpyDino35, Fartfish and Luat Games. Here we go. Thanks so much for watching everyone, I really appreciate it. If you like what you see and would like to see more, make sure to like and subscribe and do all of the cool things, and I will see you in the next video. See ya.